Hi all, this is Thomas from Nighttime Logic, and in this video I would like to show you how easy you can build the open source FPGA design for the time card. All information and links you need you will also find later in the video notes. Perfect, then I would say we are ready to start. Our starting point is the Time Appliance project on GitHub. Here you can go to code, copy the Git repository link, and clone it on our local PC. I have prepared here already on the C drive the folder TC for the time card where I can do a right click, git clone. The link is already pasted in, click on OK and it downloads all the source to my host system. During that time I would like to introduce you also a bit more into the time card folder structure. In this folder we have also the driver, uh, some GNSS configuration, hardware design files, oscillator configuration, some test stuff and of course the FPGA, FPGA sources. For the FPGA design there are two versions. One is the binary, which is only a binary licensing with closed source uh, IP cores. Today we will focus fully on the open source version. Here all the source code is available. Let's go into the open source folder. In this readme, the whole structure of this folder is described. Here we have implementation folders, IP folders, module folders, and also some package files. In the implementation folder, there are different kind of implementation blocks. Today we will focus for the base time card. In this subfolder, there is also a readme file. This readme file describes a lot of stuff like the design overview, like address mapping, interrupt mapping, uh, how registers can be controlled, about LEDs, and of course also a small description how to build the project from scratch. To create the project we have to call the create project tickle script. This can be done in Vivado. At the moment we are using Vivado 2019.1. In later videos I will show you how you can easily upgrade it to a newer version. But for now we are sticking to 2019.1. Ok, let's go to Vivado then and call this project script. Under tools you can call run to tickle script. Then we have here the tickle script create project tickle. Just call it. Then the project is built in Vivado. All required source files are added to this project and in a later step also uh, the block design is drawn. That you will see soon in here in the background. Now it starts to add all the required IP cores as block design elements to the Vivado block design. This is fully done automatically so you have not to do there any interaction by yourself. For a first step this is everything which is, has to be done so it's fully automatically you have not to touch it at the moment. All the blocks you can see here are also interconnected. This is similar what you can see here in the block design uh, of the readme file. So all these different kind of cores are here added as block design elements. This takes now a couple of seconds, but as soon as it's ready, we can also start the implementation. The FPGA design contains at the end two design ones. One is for the golden image and the other one is for the update image. For this reason there are also two create binary scripts here. But we have also a combined one which is called create binaries all. The golden image is used as a backup image for field upgrades. This allows us to make safe field upgrades, so if there goes something wrong in the field, like a power down or whatever, you can still go back to the golden image, which is a stable image, which allows you again to update it in the field. Perfect! Now our block design is built. Let's have a short look into the source list. Here we have a couple of files. One is the time card top design, which is a, is a pure VHDL file. Uh, this has also uh, some glue logic included. And then we have a wrapper file, which basically wraps around the whole BD which we have here. And then we have also the BD itself. Let's have a short look into the block design. 
If we zoom here in a bit, then you can see different kind of elements. Here, for example, we have an IP code. This is a timestamp for the calls per second. Here we have a signal generator, additional timestamper, frequency counter, and all this stuff which is needed for the time code. In the top address, the address editor, you have also the address mapping of all these cores. So here you can see the full address mapping of this IP cores. This is also reflected here in the address mapping of the readme file. Perfect. Now we are theoretically ready to build the project. Let's have a short look also into the design runs. As already mentioned before, we have a golden image design run and a default uh, implementation design run. Both are called as soon as I call the create binaries all tickle script. Good, then let's start that. It, it, it will take a couple of minutes, but afterwards I will be back. So we can go again to run tickle script, create binary soul, and now the runs are, have started. So let's wait a couple of minutes and I'm soon back. After approximately 60 minutes, the design runs are finished. Now you have the op option to open the implement design. There you could see how the FPGA design is physically placed inside the FPGA. There is also the option to open the report view or to go directly to the hardware manager. In the hardware manager you could program the SPI, the SPI flash or you can also flash the FPGA directly. This step we will skip for now, but in another video tutorial I will show you the possibility how to program the time card. Now we will have a look into our results. We have called the create binary small tickle script. This was creating a run for the golden image as well as for the update image. So we got two binary files which were combined in a st later step to one binary file. Additionally, you can see here some information about the utilization of the FPGA resources as well as the runtime for different runs. Now we will go to our uh, source code folder to see what are the output products. So we go into the FPGA time card folder, FPGA, open source, implementation, xilinx, time card. And here we are. Here is a new folder called time card. Inside this folder are all the files used by the Vivado project. So all the run information, run results and stuff like that is stored here. Additionally, you have this Vivado project file here. With this Vivado project file, you can reopen the project as well. This can be used later on instead of creating the complete project from scratch again via the tickle script. In the folder binaries are now our results of the different design runs. There is on one hand the golden image, and on the other hand the update image. As already mentioned, the update image and the golden image are combined to one binary file to program the complete SPI flash initial. This is then the factory time card OS.bin file. In this PRM file, which I quickly open, you can see how it's combined. So in the first section, we have the golden image on this address range here. And in the second section, we have the update image, starting from this address space here. So now, if you start to program the time code initially, you have to use the factory time code OS.bin file to program the complete SPI flash. If you are already on the field, you can also use the time code OS.bin file to do a field upgrade. This has to be programmed in special, special sections. Um, the same file is more or less the one which is called timecodeos.bin. This file has some additional header information which could be used before programming the SPI flash from the software. This allows to double check if the programming or the bin file is really the correct one for the corresponding hardware. Alternatively, you have also the bit file. The bit file could be used to flash directly the FPGA. If you do that, you will lose on every power cycle uh, the bit stream again. So in general, we are really working with the factory, the underlying timecode OS.bin file for programming the complete flash. 
or we are using the time card request of bin file to do a field upgrade. Well, perfect. This was it already from the first tutorial how to create the open source time card FPGA design from scratch. I hope you saw how easy it is to build it from scratch and you start playing around with it. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I'm looking forward to see you in future tutorials. Have a good day. Bye.